Sweet relief. Sweet relief. Cricket is not happiness. There's nothing in cricket that will ever make you happy. But relief, I'll have a slice of that. Australia retained the ashes. They retain the ashes. <laughs> Weird word. Weird game. Silly sport. Silly men. <laughs> <laughs> the West Indies in India are playing a test match oh, right yeah. at the moment. Currently, West Indies need 289 to win, or more likely, India eight wickets to win. Hey, Harman Preet calls in the news, so we ask a big question. What does it take for a woman to lose 100% of a match fee? More on that later. <laughs> and also, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, the first test was an absolute belter as well. We'll talk about that, a game that none of us have seen a single ball of. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Budgie Smuggler. BudgieSmuggler.com for all of your swimwear needs. Tell you what, it is hot in the Northern Hemisphere right now. If you're planning a little Northern Hemisphere escape, a little sojourn, if you will, and I know that you will, <laughs> use the code Good Areas. Good Areas at budgiesmuggler.com or budgiesmuggler.com.au if that is your preference. Support for TGC comes from our dear patrons patreon.com forward slash great cricketer who have got behind the boys. There is about three and a half thousand or so. Many people who've been there from day one say that's too many. They don't like it anymore. That's fair enough. But you can sign up to Patreon at patreon.com forward slash great cricketer. Uh, Pez, it's sweet relief. But also you want to say, oh, there's, I mean, there's so much more to come at TJC. Wee, 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 wee. There is so much more to come at TJC. There's obviously a World Cup around the corner. Uh, there are some ODIs. There's obviously the Asia Cup as well. There's, there's just, it's nonstop cricket. And then before you know it, Dave Warner's victory lap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and book. Uh, yeah, very, very quickly before we get into um, matters that are explaining why your voice has such a jaunt in it. I've never seen, I've never heard such melody uh, in your <laughs> voice. Uh, pe- people will know, I mean, our, our podcast is bigger than it's ever been at the moment. The venture is bigger than it's ever been at the moment. Uh, people are tuned into the ashes, but uh, we, we are looking for a major partner or partners to join us this Australian summer after the World Cup. Uh, we want to make a bigger splash than we already have with the great cricket our, our last two or three years out. Numbers, engagement, audiences being demonstrably bigger than many competitors who actually have resource uh, and budget. So it's more than two it, people. It's a serious. It's a serious <laughs> thing. If, if if anyone wants to jump on and supercharge this thing, we want to go much bigger. We're just getting started. Uh, it's just a two and a half person operation. Grade cricketer at gmail uh, If you think it's worth supercharging, get in touch. Not to be confused with the luck now. Super giants mm. or super cheap auto. <laughs> Are they talking about super cheap auto? <laughs> Some things are super cheap. <laughs> Do you want to get into the Vistral Minutes? Yeah, fuck it. Go. <laughs> fuck it, go. The people want the result. The people need a result. If it goes to 2-2, we go off boundary count. Gentlemen, this is democracy manifest. <laughs> Retain the ashes, have we? Laughing at the rain, are we? I hope you're happy with yourselves. You Aussies are a bunch of weak cunts. <laughs> See you boys at the Oval. 2-2. Two, two, fuck off. <laughs> oh, yeah. We will turn the ashes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were fucking shite. But we still did it. Yeah, did it. Yeah, yeah. You fuck right off. <laughs> Go fucking murder, you little cheating convict fuckers. I can't fucking believe it <laughs> with your fucking silly little boring tactics. <laughs> oh, you guys fucking... So we're going to come to your gaff in two years' time or whenever the fuck we're going to down and we strangle you all. Fuck off. We're going to slap you at the oval. Fuck off. I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> I've lost it. Depressed. Fuck the stupid clever in this country. You dirty... Cheating, Aussie pieces of shit. <laughs> two point nine two. Fuck off. <laughs> I like that. That's good. The Premier League starts next month, so none of this actually matter. <laughs> oh, who do you think's to be top scorer? I reckon it's going to be Erdogan Ireland again. <laughs> Fuck off. That's it. Good circuit, Manchester. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that we prioritised Johnny Bester's ego and serious batting starts of actually winning this Test match. I like, did really well to get those 99 runs, but I'd rather have won the test match. Mm. These basketball vibes can really fuck off. Mm. Never want to see a bucket hat again in my life. <laughs> Only Dom Turning on basketball. Mm. Congratulations, Australia. 
But you know what? You'll never have the Falklands. And that's all that you Back in Northern is moaning about not having a test up in the next Ashes series. That's your fucking reason why. Anyway, do you at the Oval? Two and three quarters, two. <laughs> Turning on each other, Northern. Yeah. Ooh, we're Australia. We retain the Ashes. <laughs> oh, we don't like playing in rain. Oh, I'm Marcus Labuschagne. Can I have a look at that ball, please? Oh, I want to face part time spinners. Fucking disgrace a lot of you. First boat home. Sick of it. <laughs> Cheat. What a piece of shit cricket. <laughs> Most incredibly difficult time. Please put your umbrellas out for peers. <laughs> Hashtag Raingate. <laughs> you are so boring. The Australian cricket team are boring. It's embarrassing. Mm. Anyway, congratulations to Ricky Ponting for winning the Open. <laughs> 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 Fucking trumpet. Fuck. (laughs) Fucking twat. That's it. (laughs) It rained at Old Trafford. Why is this happening to me? (laughs) Um, Not actually related, but uh, his pairs are getting Botox. It's got a smooth old forehead there. My mum reckons he's definitely got both on. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pez, it rained in Manchester. Uh, where are you getting your Botox done? Yeah, no. I, uh, For the old smooth no, no, no Botox. I'm not like the majority of the Australian team who does partake. You know, there's You're no Botox. You're not putting sandpaper on uh, your head, well, are you? Skin, I have a skincare regime um, as, as kind of organised by my wife. But uh, no, no Botox uh, involved. I can, I can clarify that. Australia made 320 in the first innings. Mm. Wokes took five for 62. England made 570 off, I think it was 23 overs. Crawley hit 189. Root hit 84. Uh, Stokes and Brooke made 50s as well. And Bairstow, 99. Red! Australia finished 214 for five. Marnus hit 111. Nelson. Um, but, of course, what we're all thinking is, uh, is if things had just gone England's way, they'd be winning 4-0. What about what about some of the fucking chat, man? This like this it's it is this entire series has been filled with some of the wildest, weirdest chat I think I've ever seen from England. You know, when when we lost it was void. We're gonna declare early on day one, we're not gonna pick a wicket keeper, play stupidly aggressive. Zach Crawley ball first uh, first ball four, my favorite ashes moment ever. We'll win the next best by one fifty. Inc- incite the spirit of cricket when it soups. Alex Carey doesn't get barred, doesn't doesn't pay for haircuts. I have no regrets about any wrong decision I've ever made. We are a legacy team. We should play till ten PM. <laughs> Their win is hollow. Mm. It's a wild series for chat. Mm. Even for an Ashes standards, you know, and the and the thing about we all, we all feel it deeply because it's the Ashes and the thing we care about the most. So even like the semi interested become slightly more semi interested because mm. they watch a couple of games or it's on a prime time for the first session in Australia, you know. So like we 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 feel these things deeply because it's connected to ancestry and home and the roots and um you know uh, who we are as people, where we're from, connection. But at the same time, what? Yeah. How do you want to do it? Like, do you want to talk about cricket? Like how cr- how cricket works? <laughs> do you want to talk about the, the cricket? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, do you, or do you want to get into the, you know the, the deeper like socio cultural malaise? Because because when it, with the cricket, it's mm. just like you know people who play cricket know that usually luck fucks you. The game hurt. You get hurt. Like the cricketing gods, yeah, deal out pain liberally to all of us mm. all of the time, and. On the odd occasion where you receive some fortune, you grab it, you go, big time, you get out of there, mm. like, like that. That that's that's it. Mm. I mean, it's as though like the first two games didn't happen. Yeah, so, that's so, that's the weirdest thing. Man. Like, like let, let's have it. Let's have it right. Australia was getting fucking pumped, pumped in this game. Yeah, yeah. England have been playing way better cricket than Australia recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the scoreline. Was two one, mm. so what? I, I I get bemused about the idea that there is any like uh, injustice to it all. The recency the- bias is incredible. Yeah, I mean, like the league table doesn't lie in a five match league season. Like 
the, like the, the, I suppose the big thing is that, um, you know, England fans feel, and, and rightfully so, that they should have won the first game. And, like, I've maintained that, yeah, they should have done if they were a better team. But, they, but, they, yeah. but, but Australia played well in that game as well. And, like, and they won that game fair and square. You know, like Australia is also allowed to compete as an opposition. Yeah, it's like the, the whole st- the whole story of these Ashes is like England, what they're doing. You know, and there's that- a very strange like psychosomatic phenomenon going on where it's all about England. You can see it in their language mm. about themselves. They they talk about themselves. They rarely mention the opposition. Mm. When things don't go their way, they start talking about the movement mm. of English cricket. How yeah, it's the journey, it's the journey of mm. it. Like it's a uh, it's a really bizarre thing. Uh, it, you know, yeah. like in, even like in the second test match, like Australia kind of pumped England in that game. And, and Stokes makes 155, wasn't it? Like, which is one of just one of the greatest fourth inning scores mm. and innings we, but ever. He, but he did. But he did it. Yeah. So it wasn't, not, it wasn't a pumping. Like, you know, there, there, there's that section of people who are like, if it wasn't for Stokes' 155, yeah. this wouldn't have happened. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. You know, like. But it did happen. If my uncle didn't have plums. <laughs> He'd be my auntie, <laughs> like like. Yeah. But he di- he did it. Yeah. I mean, it, like ultimately, I- England engineered themselves into a situation by both failing to win the urn in Australia, mm. and then also finding themselves two 0 down at where they, home. At home, mm. where they left themselves to the whims of matters like luck and weather, and the like. The the way I see it is that. Though they've been playing some absolutely thrilling cricket that mm-hmm. was coming home with the wettest of wet sails that frightened me under my covers. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, Basball's excesses outweighed its excellence. Mm-hmm. You know, its early excesses with a premature declaration here and then in this test, a prolonged declaration there and indulging of Johnny Bairstow's runs, of watching Jimmy Anderson with the bat, all of this shit that's part of what they do, it's part of their movement, has conspired to hurt them. It's like left them perhaps entertaining and entertaining to people Mm -hmm. and the entertainers, but it has not helped mathematically. Mm -hmm. And so just from the grade cricket perspective, it's – it's G strings and court jester hats and songs and like <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the entertainment. <laughs> it's two one. Yeah, that's it. Like it, it, it's this failure to like deal with the, the truth of the math. Yeah. of it. Yeah, uh, and it's kind of funny to listen to people whinge as they have before. Yeah. about. Australian tactics about the manner of victories, the morality of the victory. If you get yourself to a 2 0 position in the ashes and you are the holders of the urn, you get to enjoy the fruits of luck and weather. Right. It is an English ashes series that has been influenced by weather. It happens every fucking time. Mm. Just because the chronology of it doesn't suit what you want yeah. doesn't mean that we have to put roofs on stadiums or change the laws post haste. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. Grow up. Mm. Your child. <laughs> the first test match, Usman Khawaja scored 100. He made it 80 in the second innings. The second test match, Steve Smith scored 100 as well. Uh, Travis Head made big runs mm. as well. Uh, I'm looking at yeah, guys in the series. Marnus has made 100 now as well. Mm. Travis Head's made three scores of 50 plus of 48 mm. in this innings. Um, Line eight wickets Line in the eight first wickets. game. Uh, Cummins took six far. Right. Uh, Stark took five mm. far. Alex Carey took his catches. Alex Carey hasn't dropped a catch yet. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at a pretty good cricket team playing some pretty good cricket um, that have made far less mistakes than the opposition. And, like, there just seems to be this notion that, like, oh, like it's 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 unfair. It's like, oh, what the fuck are you talking about? Australia have played really well, and like over the course of a well four tests so far, Australia just have made slightly less mistakes, slightly fewer mistakes. Yeah, okay. Like England were pumping us in this game, yeah. but like you don't get like bonus points for a pumping in a test match. It's all worth just one. Mm. Like so, it, it's you're looking at a nation with a very odd relationship to rules and laws, many of which mm. they created. Mm. Uh, like it. it it is. It's just mathematics. It's just. It's just happened. But when the rules and laws don't work in the favour, mm. then we start talking about more intangible matters of what is hollow and what is moral and what is spirit mm. and what is the journey and what is the movement and what is Brendan McCullum saying, boss, we don't. We're too lucky to get wet. We're too lucky to get wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how yeah. is that not funny? <laughs> like, like it's yeah. just funny. Yeah. And it would be if the shoe was on the other foot. In the third test match, uh, 
Australia made 270 or something, didn't they? And then they had England 120 for seven or something like that. And then it's like, well, Australia, Australia could have won that game, but they didn't because Stokes went mental and had made another great innings and, and then Wokes and then Wood contribute and then they win that guy. It's just, it's so fucking weird, man, like this conversation and like the lack of introspection about their own performance and, the, and their shortcomings and mistakes. Mm. We're sort of reviewing the series as a whole, not just this game at the moment, I suppose. But like you and I were just talking off air, right, about if the reverse happened in Australia, Australia's got a home ashes, right? They lose the first test match at the Gabba. They lose the second test match at Adelaide. Um, so now they're two nil down at, at mm, home to half England. The teams in jail. That's right. And then the third test match is at say Perth, and Australia win that test match. So now it's two one. And then the fourth test match then would be at the MCG, and Australia's like just dominating England, right? And then it just pisses down for two days, and they don't get that result to make it uh, a blockbuster in Sydney for mm. the fifth test match. I feel like Australians would be like, "Oh, we fucked it. We fucked it in the first two test matches by losing." Like, isn't isn't yeah. that the truth? It's funny. Like the the series has given rise to this concept of what a battery we always talk about the shoe on the other foot or mm. what about when england said this or what about when they said this mm. in 2010 or graham swan said this in 2013 right, or right, right. what if piers morgan yeah. tweeted boom and, and yeah. it gets a bit tedious of like oh if, yeah you yeah, would do yeah. the same thing in reverse but i do think there are some like fundamental cultural differences as well with the way you address something that goes wrong i mean in australia like if something goes wrong with us we go too far the other way of like castigating our own side like mm. i like i said this morning on our video like you know if we lost this game like like people talking about Cummins resigning, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> like, like, like yeah. uh, and, and it's not as though. Like, I mean, there are, there are exceptions. There are lots of people in England who can be real about these things. Like yeah. a lot of the um, the sensible ex captains were very real about what happened with Bear Stow, and there's right. been some really right. good articles about some of the pitfalls and issues with baseball. It isn't it isn't everybody, but like. The, the England, this England team seems to have a strange unwillingness to confront things that they may have done differently. Mm. You know, like yeah, just yeah, noting, yeah. like noting some of Ben Stokes' reactions right. just to, to questions he was asked mm. um, publicly. Anyway, I don't know. You, you don't know what they're like privately, but sure. like this, this is a, this is a team that's won one test from four in a home series. They're like relentlessly and exclusively impressed with themselves and their journey and the impact on the public. Mm. Uh, They've played some thrilling cricket, but like, how good, how like good can it have been if they've won every toss, lost the threat of Nathan Lyon, had just about all of the conditions on eighteen out of the twenty days yeah. that it's been on, yeah, and yet head to the oval two one down yeah. at home, yeah, it's, it can't be that good, like yeah. by definition, <clears throat> right? But they're just facts that they seem like unwilling to confront i would also say just on that just isn't it a matchup it's a it's a bit clickbaity and headliney and uh inciting violence for no reason but they've also won f uh three games of the last 19 ashes test match three of 19 mm. now like there are different players playing coming some in good cricket playing oh, some good cricket there are there are it's not the same They're improving it's not the same 22 players against each other for the entire but like just in terms of a matchup sense i mean that's like it ain't many wins there now, mm. like uh, it's, you know, I know lots changed since McCullum, Stoke, etc. But um, to your point, yeah, it's like a fair bit's gone their way uh, in terms, of, yeah, just like just the intangibles there, or well, mm. not intangibles, but like, with the toss and conditions that, and that sort of thing. It's like, well, home ashes, and you're, not, you're down two one heading to the oval. Mm. It's not, it's not yeah. like just bare facts. Of the yeah. case, it's not that good, is it? Yeah. It's not that good. Changing the game, yeah, uh, yeah. Like uh, just strange, strange relationship with the. With the truth as well, like it, 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 which speaks to the baseball mind trickery kind of things. There's, there's a fine line between like genius and insanity with this stuff. Like, like mm. just even the the sort of the ostentatiousness of of the England players, like out on the field with the rain fucking bucketing down, like mm. playing keepy uppy mm. as a message to everybody, like like pitifully attempting to give the impression that everything was fine, like Zach Crawley drenched <laughs> from head to toe, <laughs> like drenched with the truth of its own weather. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I just thought it was a pretty good metaphor for what's been happening. It's like, see, everything's fine. But it's like, mm. mate, I've got eyes. I can yeah. see what's going on. Yeah. You're fucking wet. Well, that was the weird thing. Uh, when so is your posts. <laughs> You're talking about before about that lack of uh, remorse or regret, and this it, it's just it's just part of this massive cult which this thing is. Which that, wouldn't be if it hadn't rained for a bit. You know what I mean? We two two were in big trouble. Yeah, hey, exactly. Well, uh, you know, man. um, Stokes was asked by Atherton just like you know with the with the knowledge of hindsight now, would you have declared on day one of the first test match? And he said no. 
Oh, and the like, tone, the tone is everything. In it's that just, as well. I'm just, uh, it's, just, it's this idea of like living your life with no regrets, no remorse. Now, like, I like the idea in theory, uh, much like communism, um, <laughs> but like. <laughs> But, like, the idea that you can live your life without any sort of, like, zero regrets about anything, it's just the way it is. Now, I understand, like, it is what it is and you can't change the past, and I understand that notion and that sentiment, generally speaking. But, like, it's just not real, and especially in cricket. Like, no one lives – like, I've got fucking regrets about what I did this morning. Yes, uh, and you should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as I finished up, I was like, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Mm. Um, but, like, uh, especially with cricket, you know, like, fuck, I mean, who has ever played the game of cricket and have zero regrets about – I mean, I regret even playing, taking up as a sport, you know, when I was five. But this this idea of like uh, not actually learning from mistakes. Now, England actually, I feel like they have learned from their mistakes of the first two test totally. matches. Like they've, they've fucking wound it back a little bit, but you know, but like, I just don't really understand like that, that specific thing of like day one, Runs on the board, declare. I understand, I understand at the time, it's like, yeah, get him in. If you take two wickets in the first session, they're just in there, then they're well ahead of the game. But, like, they end up losing the game by two wickets. And uh, if they added another 40 or 50 runs, because Root was on 100 and something, wasn't he? Like, Australia probably don't win that game, you know? Or it would have been a draw. So, I don't, it just it seems... It seems um, I think it would be frustrating for a lot of English, like, journos and punters to you know, for these questions to be asked of like, oh, you know, are there any, are there any things you might have tweaked in mm. retrospect that might have changed this series, mm. just tactically, strategically, on-field decisions? And I'm sure the answer is yes, like privately, but it's this kind of uh, fundamentalist, evangelical, zealous commitment to the idea that everything they do is divine and part of a bigger movement that you if you don't, if you're not on board with, you don't understand. Mm. And it's like that just couldn't be more the opposite of what cricket is. Yeah. Like there, there is no greater sport for levelling you than cricket. And I feel like a levelling has gone on. Australia has played this kind of backs-to-the-wall, pragmatic, sensible, or almost too defensive style of cricket, mm. uh, but they find themselves one up going into the final test. So, like, it is a case of, by definition, the cricket has been better. They have put themselves into a position where they have benefited from the luck that has gone their way. Yeah. Uh, just because it hasn't arrived chronologically in a in a perfect narrative doesn't remove the fact of it. I just think that English fans could, uh, or England fans could, you know, y- use their team um, perhaps even with that question from Atherton to Stokes, mm. I just thought it was like, uh, like I, you know, love Stokes, but especially as a player, and, and I think what they've done is extremely interesting and it's improved them. But yeah, yeah. It, was, it looked rude to me, you know, and wh- why can't that answer be? He's, he's in a moment of frustration, sure, no doubt sure, about it, you yeah. know, and you may, maybe give some rope to that. But, like, why can't you say, look, we'll, we'll have a look, a look at those things. I understand why there might be a few different perspectives on that. From our perspective, this is why we play the way we play. But it was the, the rejection of it, the rejection right. of the idea that there's going to be any kind of inquest mm. into what could have been different that I think actually gives away part of the weakness of the baseball thing. It's the whole... Brendan McCullum mind tricking them into not getting wet. It's playing keepy uppy and getting mm. when everyone can see that they're drenched. It's declaring when Joe Root's on a hundred um, red, destroying us everywhere. Mm. It's it's batting on with Johnny Bairstow so we can all get on board with that journey, you know. Mm. And it's when you're losing, starting to talk about entertainment instead of winning. I was like, well, great, I'm entertained. Mm. Cheers. I'm both entertained and I'm happy Australia's winning. That's, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Just with the, from the Australian perspective, like um, people have been complaining that, you know, Australia don't play this attractive brand of cricket. Mm. Let's be right about that. It is a, a very deliberate um, method that they're playing with right now, mm. purely, as Chris Rogers said so brilliantly a couple of weeks ago on the show, like um, – Fighting fire fighting, water. Right. Mm. And because Australia pretty much are – a front foot team. Now, obviously no one plays test cricket anymore, yes. but um, I think they learn a lot. I think, I think this Australian team learn a lot when they played in Pakistan, which was a real grind. Obviously England won their three nil and they played in- incredible cricket to do that, taking 60 wickets along the way there. Australia won their three test series, one nil in Pakistan, winning on the final session of the third test match on the fifth day. Right. And that was a real grind. They got themselves in that position and they won that series. I think they learn a lot playing that way and they are playing very deliberately to you know, park the mm. bus, use a football Mourinho sense, based on the um, the concept that England will fuck it up. And guess what? England fucked it up. It's 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 exactly what's happened. Yeah, but um, they fucked it up early. That's the thing. They fucked it's it up actually, early. Like the, the cricket that's being played now, they I played thought fantastic Australia cricket. erred strategically. 
in this game and they got lucky. Yes, but yes. they were allowed to exploit luck mm. because of what happened early. Just because England's playing good cricket now doesn't excuse mm. – this is what a test it's series is. It's a five-test series. Exactly. Like yeah. they, they, the first two tests count. They, were all, <laughs> they, they needed to be perfect because of how much they fucked it up mm. in tests one and two. Right. They, because of their excesses, you know, their, their indulgences in mm. the first two tests really cost them for this test. They have been playing near-perfect cricket, mm-hmm. but it is kind of funny – that the ego and the fuck ups from the first two tests have actually thwarted them here, and people are complaining because of this recency bias that you, you know you were talking about mm. off air. But they just forget what happened in the first two tests. Mm. Australia have exploited it. It's been canny from Australia. You know, it's been a bit wily. It's not the Austra- It's not an Australian team that we're used to right. seeing. You know, like a, a, a composed, non front foot park the bus Aussie team. But when you haven't won a series in twenty plus years. You're kind of going to take it. Mm. Uh, Cummins has done something as captain. I know that Brighton and Coverdale said this on Twitter. Cummins has done something as captain that neither Ricky Ponting nor Michael Clark was able to do. He's on the precipice of doing something that hasn't been done for 20-odd years. Uh, they, I think Australia will need to change something in mm. order to, to defeat where the England team is now. Sure. But I'm not – yeah, it's, it is – it's remarkable – observing the almost wall-to-wall blow-up yeah. in, in England across this. I mean, if there are people out there who are taking the lick, mm. uh, then I'm not hearing from them. Wouldn't mind. I've, I've actually seen so few Licks. people say – no, yes, even saying, like, congratulations to Australia. And, like, I'm, I'm just I'm, – I'm saying, mm. like, I don't need that in my life. I'm mm. just saying, like, I just – so much of the conversation is around, like, it being unfair, how do we put roofs on stadiums, mm. Um, can we fix the trains in the UK? Um, you know, so they can start the games earlier. Uh, it's just like the and like yeah. Australia just seemed to be like um, like the uh, like computer mode when you're playing someone in FIFA. Like yeah. you're just playing against the computer, yeah. it's but, like, but it's them. actually about you. Yeah. Like and like Australia is just like l- just lucky to be there. It's, yeah. I just find that really bizarre experience. Yeah. Um, just as, as an observer of that. Uh, so um, and I'm extremely yeah. and I'm extremely relieved. <laughs> Mate, I've got to tell you, I watched a lot of uh, people like, oh, the 2 2 would have been fantastic. Mm, not for me. <laughs> Mate, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you and I are both exactly that. Mate, our sleep is absolutely fucked. Yeah, and like, uh, cool. stayed up all night on Saturday night for day four when Mana scored the 100 and they, they played the two hours there. Mate, I was riding every single ball like it was fucking just, just desperate for them to get through it. And then last night, Obviously, ran around, but like I couldn't. I went to bed, couldn't go to sleep. Um, then it got to a point where the game was going to be on. Then it started to rain again, and like, so like, and that's what I said at the top there. Just there's nothing happy about. it. I'm just completely relieved. I'm just it's just pure relief over mm. this. Um, and also, um, you know, in terms of about uh, what you're saying there about um, Cummins having done something now that uh, Clark and Ponting haven't done. Thank you. By the next time, by the time. Uh, the next Ashes comes around in 2025 down here. Uh, it'll be 10 years, 10 years since England have held the urn. That's like, it's another long drought. Obviously they haven't won a game here since 2010-11 um, when they won that series. They fucking smashed us 3-1, winning three of those games by an innings. Since then have not won a game here. Um, they are playing better cricket uh, right now than they have for a long period of time. So they, they could definitely take a game. Or two. They're just, it's so it's so hard to win in Australia. So mm. you would think it's very unlikely to win for this single team to win um, in Australia next time around. So then you're looking at like... A lot of changes in both teams are going to be happening as well. Absolutely. Right? They're, they're aging. But yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, England's bowling attack for this test match or last test mm. match was the oldest mm. bowling attack in the history yeah, and of cricket. What about our batting? It's going to look really different too. Completely. Uh, you'd be very surprised if Kwaja's still playing. Obviously, yeah. Warner won't be. Um, Smith, who knows? Um, yeah. Travis Head's 29, so he's yeah. young enough. Um, yeah, there's a, cu- there's a couple of pretty important top order positions <laughs> yeah. uh, for grabs. Yeah. Do you think we'll miss Steve Smith when he goes? <laughs> 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 He's going to be very hard to replace. <laughs> <laughs> we're just saying off air, yeah. like how uh, we're so fucking tired. That yeah. like you're reading all these excellent comments online. You know, we ask what's given you crow's feed or mm. on, on YouTube, and they're like, you know, beautifully um, constructed jokes and acerbic, and we're mm. just sitting there going like, "Fuck off, Igloo, you, 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 <laughs> you fucking dub cuts. You, you should, like just can't." <laughs> Can't talk. <laughs> brain's brain's gone. Yeah, just pure emotion, uh, and also not talented. But pure, uh, pure emotion. Yeah, pure emotion and no brain power. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, that's sort of a overall 
Uh, Blake Hines sort of sums it up. Yeah, yeah. that's that's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, uh, Zach Crawley is now the leading run scorer in the Ashes. That's good. Um, He's a good player. Mate, what, that, that inning's... Uh, it's actually, um, you know, it allows Bearso to make his 99 red yeah. at the end there as well. He comes in at, uh, I don't know, seven for a thousand or whatever he did. Um, but so it's, it was, it really was a difference in the game. I mean, it was just, it was incredible batting. I mean, he, he, I suppose he, he rode his luck when he scored 189 off 182. Um, <laughs> yeah, <that's a> <laughs> when, uh, like, look, uh, it's not, a, it's not a good, it's not a good time to say it, well, but back in the, um, the ashes in Australia, in Sydney, Zach Crawley took Cummins down for 70 runs and, he, he has a certain imperiousness when he just decides to walk at you and whip you through mid mm. on and square when, mm. you know, the ball's sitting top of off going mm. through the chest because mm. he's six foot 10. That's a half ollie, mm. you know, or if you, if you're too wide swings from the hip and, and if it, if it goes well for him, you might nick a couple over slips and mm. the rest just get absolutely smashed. Mm. Then he's knocking you over the top. I mean, I just thought it was, it was that, and it was, a, it yeah. was a really good innings yeah. like, and he, he plays the percentages not really, but he mm. plays he plays low percentage cricket. But sometimes those low percentages uh, come off, and he, and he he set up the game for England. He's player of the match, mm. and uh, it was one of the all time Ashes hundreds. And it's a great circuit for him tonight, of course. <laughs> he would have sung the song mm. by himself. Um, he said that, uh, or he he acknowledged, I suppose, that, that harsh. He said that. Um, if it wasn't for this leadership group, that being McCollum and Stokes, he wouldn't be in the team, totally. um, which is, you would say, is fair. He's played 40 test matches and averages 28. Uh, he obviously had two – he scored 230 against Pakistan. Uh, this this innings was one of the all-time great Ashes innings, you would have to say. Obviously, he's got Stuart Broad's favourite Ashes memory, mm-hmm. um, hitting a four that time. Um, so, uh, you know, a fair play to him. And I think it said a lot when uh, about seven or eight of the Aussie guys went up to shake his hand at the, uh, the, <laughs> the end of the innings, um, obviously uh, trying to – uh, redeem some credit for not paying for haircuts, but um, ha. uh, yeah, it's uh, it was it was quite something. Um, Johnny Bairstow, ninety nine red. Uh, he made some very uh, very aggressive comments. He was very um, punchy. punchy, very punchy in, the, in his in his press conference when he was put up for the press conference at the end of day three or two two or three. Um, and he he seemed remarkably upset about the criticism that he'd been receiving. Um, he did say that he's extremely proud about where he's at and fucking earth he should be. Like he, he was apparently told that he may not run again or walk again or play professional sport again. Quite a range, uh, quite a range there between walking and play professional sport again. But he said those things were all true. He's got like nine or 10 screws in his leg. Um, it is remarkable that he's still in the team. Uh, and to do well, he also batted nicely in the first test match, Sydney. as well. He made 80 or something, runnable 80, something like that. Uh, 99 here. Uh, the keeping no good. He did, he did take a decent catch. Um, in the first innings here, I wouldn't say that's fixed all the sins, um, but uh, but he he, he seemed uh, he seemed really agitated about the criticism that he had received, and uh, uh, and then obviously spoke about his run out and saying that you know that he's he's heard and seen kids are doing it now in uh, in club cricket, so that, that's uh, it's not a good look for the game. Somebody think of the children, um, but uh, I, it was it was an interesting it was an interesting um, experience hearing him talk because. I wondered if, like, that sort of uh, him against the world, Johnny against the world, is like yeah. what, what actually sort of spurs, pro, spurs him on, you know? It's pro sports brain, isn't yeah. it? It's, I took that personally. Mm. It's uh, I mm. think when you're, you're occupying the, the body, like a – if you are Johnny Bairstow, it's whatever it takes to motivate yourself and, and yeah. you just I- interpret it in a way that gets the best out of yourself. Um, it would be much more difficult to filter a lot of the criticism when it's about you, I'd imagine, mm. to sort of go, oh, that's actually a really fair point. I have had a bad day with the gloves and maybe mm. I'm going to think about that. I mean, mm. uh, it's just it's just pro sports brain, isn't it? I, I hold a big candle for Johnny Bairstow. I think the stories that we've had about him, which are b- beautiful and funny, uh, mm. outweigh – any of this stuff and he just strikes yeah. me as sort of person that the team um, looks after, you know, that perhaps perhaps there's a certain fragility in, in the way he's um, constructed, maybe with good yeah. reason. He's a really talented player uh, and the way he interprets some of this stuff is um, – perhaps like is actually not that inconsistent with how lots of pro sports people mm. interpret criticism. Mm. You know, it's just that it's just self-protection. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, it doesn't make sense really to kind of plead with the public to 
understand how difficult his injury has been and there, and therefore accept poor wicket keeping. I mean, I think mm. it's okay just to say, well, the, the keeping's mm. not up to scratch and literally the best keeper in the world is waiting in the wings. You can say it without <laughs> yeah, taking yeah. it personally, but he, yeah. he, he takes it personally. And yeah, right. That, you know, that's just how a, a, a sportsman is. And I'm, I'm, I'm all for wide JB, even though, you know, the whole run-out thing is, or stumping thing is ridiculous. It's just, it's just, it's just out and you do the same thing, like yeah. crack, crack on, have yeah. a beer. And did. Uh, no, well, because uh, um, Baz McCombs said he's not going to have a beer with the Aussie guys. So. Yeah, they changed his mind on that as well, though. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, that's only good recently, news. I, McDonald said that before the test. I oh, think. that's he, good. He's just like, no, that, we, we talked and then the beers are back on. So it's just a. Oh, good. What is that? What is that? Just, was it just carry on for a couple of days? A bit more carry on? Mm. Yeah. Cry me a more, Yeah. Hey, uh, now. Yeah, that, mate, by the way, mm. nailed on, especially if it's 2 2, but like nailed on. End of series beer in the Oval, change rooms, both teams. Isn't cricket great? What a fantastic series. Mm. You'll see the media managers and everyone yeah. and, 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 and arms around each other. Fucking absolutely nailed them. Which is how it should be, by the way. Just, you know, fierce competitors. Let bygones be bygones, mm. etc. Maybe maybe um, maybe if, maybe we should maybe we organise this now. Okay, Stuart Broad in the dressing room. Yeah, yeah. What's cutting, Alex, cu- uh, cutting Alex Cutting Alex Kez' hair. That'd be yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We could give him a few uh, yeah. tips on that kind of thing as yeah, well. Okay, Broadie and, yeah. uh, and Kez, if you guys yeah. can sort that out. Yeah. End of the fifth test match. Haircuts, yeah. Okay, I want to see that on socials. At the same time, Kerry's actually underarming the ball to stumps. <laughs> yeah, Bear, like yeah. David Sakers pulled out yellow stumps. <laughs> Bearstow's walking out. Yeah, everyone's having everyone's a laugh. Everyone's yeah. laughing. Yeah. Yeah. someone's yeah. shaking Zach Crawley's hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Cummins is standing there like a teapot. Yeah, going, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. What's he like? Tell me again. Yeah. yeah, and then like McCullum and uh, and Ronnie Mack just yeah. like arm and arm having yeah. a beer, having a beer. Maybe drinking the same beer, two straws. Yeah. Oh yeah, two straws yeah, of the yeah, beer yeah. or one one helmet. Like, maybe maybe <laughs> maybe McCullum's a soft drink, you know, because like I I didn't say I wouldn't drink soft drink. Oh nice, oh, you know what I mean? nice, yeah. yeah, a little creamy soda. Yeah, and now now becomes a bit like uh, what Warney's mural was in his house, <laughs> <laughs> all like magic eyes, or something. Yeah. Like, something We're all eye. just millionaires and none of this matters. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Major League yeah. Cricket. That's right. And there's Piers Morgan. <laughs> So if we can sort that out for the next test, that'd be good. Um, now that the game has ended in a draw, we get to celebrate Manus's 100. Uh, oh, yeah, and, yeah. And oh, what a great 100 it was. What a great 100. A, 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 seri- a series-defining 100. Yes, <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> because of a band of weather. Uh, his second 100 away from home. He's 11th overall um, in test match cricket. Uh, I suppose when you look at his scores over the series, I guess it might have been coming. Because uh, he he missed out on the first test match, but then he got a couple of twenties and thirties. Then he got a fifty yeah. in the first innings here, and yeah. now it's one hundred and eleven. Yeah. So it's like, ah, hey, series yeah. actually okay. Yeah. His av- his average is sixty. Uh, it's 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 come down to sort of low low fifties. He's scored um, numbers below that, so actually probability speaking, he's actually going to get a hundred at some point, and then, right. and then it, then it happens. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah, open, I was like, open your eyes, Pesa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're flickering. Somebody yeah. call a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he but played it, well. He played it was, well. It was and a so good Mitch Marsh. Indeed, indeed. We'll come to the Oval in a second, but uh, but yeah. So um, you know, before all this happened, especially day two was such a was such a big day, uh, given the way England played and the way Australia performed overall. There was questions about Cummins' captaincy. Um, he he looked for tired. Uh, uh, he looked for tired. <laughs> wow, so, <laughs> someone is, is someone is for tired over here. Method That's acting. Me. Hey, yeah. I, I'm for tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, Australia were fucking terrible on day two. Um, all three bowlers, uh, you know, the main bowlers being Cummins, Stark, Hazelwood. I think the second time ever they had all gone for more than 100 runs in an innings. It was the most runs Cummins had ever conceded in test match cricket in an innings, uh, 120 something. Um they looked listless. They looked hapless. Mm-hmm. They looked without idea. In- insipid. They looked insipid. Mm. Uh, and those things are all true. Those things are all true. Um, so is it time to get Michael Clark out of retirement so he can captain the side again is what I want to know. Uh, no, I think it's, uh, it's very fair to say that um, it, it was no good. It was no good on day two at Old Trafford. Australia were poor. England played well, sure. But, um, but those plans, whatever they had, were a combination of terrible and poorly executed. Yeah. Yeah, I think they got really lucky with the weather, mm. ultimately. You know, I did – I yeah. said it on the video this morning, but – I've heard it suggested that the that the lengthened tail, you know, the like park the bus selections actually prove themselves worthwhile given the scenario today that there was a team selected for three and a half days of cricket. But yeah. I, I just find that extremely reductive. Yeah. If Australia takes a team in to actually challenge England, then 
and and, and put England on the back foot and mm. pot, dare I say possibly even give themselves a chance to win or to break open the England side with some attacking cricket, then uh, then we don't have any of this ass ass cleansing. <laughs> Arse, mm. arse clenching and arse deep sing. Uh, <laughs> and Sean Connery saying arse clenching. <laughs> um, he needs some sleep. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, after three and a half days. So, uh, yeah, it was a really poor game from Australia, saved uh, by Marnus's innings and Mitch Marsh as well. So, yeah. you know, it speaks to some fight and resilience from the team as well. Uh, I just wanted to note that uh, I noticed that a lot of people, England included, were um, very uh, satisfied with the tone Australian captain Pat Cummins struck in the presser where he was very much, uh, you know, unders uh, on satisfaction with what happened in the game, mm-hmm. you know, like um, perhaps uh, su- like suggesting that, you know, 2-2 two, two into the over would have been great for cricket and perhaps we didn't quite deserve it. I, I just would like... Anybody who came down in the last shower, the last Manchester shower, to understand that um, when Cummins strikes that tone, he's lying. He's yeah. he's he's like the old uh, coach in that um, in that meme that comes into the American college dressing room and mm. starts going uh, hard deluxe. I mm. mean, that is like I mean, if Cummins isn't in the change room laughing like sideshow Bob, <laughs> having just won the election, uh, then I, I'm I'm not here. Once again, yeah. you know, I uh, I'm not here. Because uh, he actually walked into that presser holding a beer bong. Um, so I don't really know what he was talking about there with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he'd, be, he'd, be, he'd definitely be sitting there going, oh, mate, I feel terrible about this. I feel terrible about the way we did this. I don't know if it's uh, it just brings it up uh, even more if you talk about it. Though, um, I just, uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a bit relentless, the thing of, um, you know, Smith should be captain. Uh, I, I, That's silly. I, I, I only, it's silly. I only say that um, because, like – when Smith was captain, I, I genuinely don't ever recall a time when someone said he is a great captain. I, I, I honestly don't remember that. And maybe maybe I'm wrong with that. But, uh, look, I, I don't think uh, Cummins is, like, absolutely nailing it tactically. Um, I don't think uh, I don't oh. think that at all. I, but I think, like, at the same time, it's fucking 2-1. His record's 20 test matches. They won in Pakistan. They drew in um, Sri Lanka. They obviously didn't lose a game at home, but you sort of semi-expect against South Africa and the West Indies. Indies. Um, they've won uh, – they lost 2-1 in India, uh, and then they won the World Test Championship and they're 2-1 up. I mean, like, as a captain, okay, sure, I think Michael Clark like, was in my lifetime. He probably was tactically the best captain that I – with that being Taylor, uh, Border Taylor, Steve Waugh, Ponting, Clark, Smith, Payne, Cummins, those, those are the captains of my lifetime. I think Clark is, is 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 the best tactically that I can think of, but I don't remember Smith ever being like being praised for his his tactical brain or anything like that. I, I, I don't. Oh, I mean, but like it's it's it seems to be just all wrapped up in like his politics and yeah. and and still the still the Langer stuff because yeah. he was he was the face of that. Even though he's a he's accrued like several factions of detractors, Cummins, mm. for the reasons you say, like both the, the things he opts to stand for socially. Mm. Uh, that, you know, a, a swathe of people in Australia disagree with and on top of that do not believe a sports person should be speaking about. Uh, yeah. And it probably irritates them that something as esteemed as the Australian captain mm. is now coming down on the other side of their politics. Yeah. And then secondly, he 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 took on the old guard that yeah. are basically VT. unimpeachable. Yeah. He took them on almost single-handedly. Well, he was he was the face of it. I would say I don't think he took them on. Well, he, he, was, the, he's he was the captain. He's the captain yes. and he he stood up to them. Mm. And you know, that there's I've got no doubt people are still waiting. And so at mm. the first at any time with Cummins at the first sign of a problem, yeah. uh, there's a disproportionate um, mm. you know, pu- push against him. And then I think you could probably add a third group of people, possibly more reasonable, who just simply do not like the optic of a fast bowler as captain. It just yeah. it doesn't feel right to doesn't them in right. their loins when they're sitting there and watching. Because it. the it's best batter's like, got to be captain. That's right, and he's just it's too tall, and his his mannerisms aren't as good as Smith, whose hands and arms are quite long and big, and he's usually a long sleeve shirt, and mm-hmm. the way that the hands gesticulate is mm. is quite safe. So and then he ends up. I mean, to be fair to Smith, he captained really well in India when he when he stepped in for Cummins, and like he did look quite enterprising and imaginative. And I'm sure I'm sure he is. And it would be interesting to know how he would, you know, tactically uh, 
look at the bat, like manage the basketball thing. I, I got a feeling that uh, the plans for basketball have been long devised by McDonald and Divinudo yeah. and Cummins, yeah. like like you know se- several months, possibly years in advance. However long basketball's been around. Mm. For but and it's funny you actually mentioned the Michael Clark comparison because I think everybody agrees that he was um, on field the most Im- imaginative and successful mm. tactical captain with the way he for for example was you know used spinners he almost seemed to embody the Shane Warne approach to captaincy mm. where they were you know great mates at the time right. and um and and yet you know look at the relative. Um, Achievements of both captains, you know, not notwithstanding Clark's World Cup success, right. you know, Cummins' strength is the environment he creates. You know, the the feeling of the players in the side, which I think the players are so loyal to him. Loyal to him, they really, really appreciate uh, the the freedom and sense of being treated like an adult that Usman Khawaja has spoken about. I think Andrew McDonald's got a bit to do that as well, and I think the environmental influence, uh, like, majorly trumps whatever tactical. Um, let's say it's not even mediocrity, like whatever tactical kind of, uh, you know, averageness there is with Cummins. Uh, he might imp- he might improve in that regard, but the the environment he creates is reflected in the actual results he's had. It, they're, they're, they're very, very good. They're not great, but they're very yeah. good they're, and yeah. they're very comparable and often s- superior to his predecessors who are vaunted as greats. Mm, so mm. it's – I think there's just people who are out to get him, basically. I do you think as well you're allowed to get better as a captain? Just thinking about mm. Smith as well in that game at Indoor where mm. it was like 100 plays 80, plays 70, plays mm. 60. One of the easier times to be captain, I would have thought. But, like, but no, that's not to stick the boot in unnecessarily. I'm just thinking like maybe Smith is a better captain now. I'm sure he would be a better captain totally. now having been through everything than he, than he was when he was captain. Yeah. So you are allowed to get better. And uh, I don't think Cummins is above criticism either, by the way. You know, people writing us going like, oh, I know you guys love Cummins. He's not, ab- he's not above criticism. You know, I criticise his captaincy and the whole setup of this test uh, like enormously. Yeah. I, I, I think they got it wrong. I think the tactics were wrong. Yeah. And I think it does reveal a certain kind of uh, vanilla-ness and lack of imagination and creativity mm. within Cummins. But um, I do think that a lot of the criticism and calls to resign and stuff and the, just the gen- – I mean, we're yeah. adding to it by talking about it for yeah, so yeah, long yeah, yeah. is disproportionate mm. to, to what is um, – like to, to what is the fact of it? Well, what uh, Alex Malcolm made a great point uh, last week when he was on the show, and he said that you know he felt like um, the the main talking point in the in the in the in the war room of the Australian cricket team, the brains trust there would be talking about how to get wickets five to ten out basically because Australia's been ahead of the game in innings multiple times, and even they were in India as well in uh, the Delhi Test match when they made um, two fifty or something, and they had India one seventy uh, sorry seven for one twenty. Axar Patel, obviously the greatest batsman since Bradman uh, or Sat and depending on what continent you live on, uh, comes in and scores some runs and then they they they, they get parity in the end, don't in their first innings and they end up losing mm. that game by sweeping too much. But mm. um, Which they've fixed since with Heels' video. That is a good point, yeah, in front of the old bin there. Uh, so, uh, but that remains true in this innings. You know, the, uh, Anderson and Broad, numbers 10 and 11, added 100 and something with Johnny Bairstow, who obviously went ballistic at the end there, but they just haven't been able to close out innings and that remains true and that remains a, an issue with... Um, uh, obviously, the plans of the team, the captain, field settings, b- bouncing it halfway down doesn't seem to be working. So, uh, interesting to see if they change anything heading to the Oval. So, let's talk about the Oval right now. Yep. Uh, so, Australia didn't pick Todd Murphy. Do you reckon he's getting the gig in London? Yeah, I do. I think that uh, David Warner needs to make a significant contribution to an Australian win to um, continue his career this summer. Otherwise, I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, blood somebody new, particularly for weak teams that are visiting. Yeah, uh, I th- he, 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 mm. he needs he needs some. I'm not saying he needs a hundred necessarily, but I think he needs to contribute significantly to a win. Um, um, that's just my view. He'll get the test. He'll get he'll get this test match. Yeah, uh, I think that Mitch Marsh plays because of how well he's been playing last two tests. Yeah. I'm dropping Cameron Green for Todd Murphy coming in, and I tell you, like. Um, given Boland's performance at the Oval against India, I'm looking at that again. I'm wondering if Cummins and Stark are fit uh, as well. That's just up to them. Uh, same same goes Hazelwood. And I'm not upset if they're bringing Nisa in now, to be honest, because I think Australia 
have to fire a different shot and ask a different question of England this time around to actually try and win the game. Mm-hmm. I, I just I don't see how they can go in with the same configuration and still hope for more England errors. I think England have tightened themselves up. Mm. I think Australia has to fire a different shot, ask different questions. I think Australia has to take a risk mm. to try and break England open because the cricket they're playing is really good. If Australia goes in with the same lineup and and the same strategy, uh, I, I just think they're asking for the same thing to happen that's been happening in the last two tests. I just think there's there's a trend there. There's no more no balls from England. There's no more drop catches. Mm. The batters are knowing when to put the pedal down and to, to lift it up. I think Australia has to change something to try and prize England open. If that's Nisa, that's worth a try. It's also 2-1 as well. Uh, and I think he probably deserves a shot as well. I don't think yep. a lot of guys would be happy for him. I'm not saying... Australia can't win without him, but yep. I'm, we've been talking about Nisa a lot. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not unhappy if I see him in the side. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, um, well, I mean, Cummins will play uh, unless he is injured, which I don't think he is. Now, Stark, Stark did go off the field a couple of times, went down with his shoulder, went down with a knee. He did bowl uh, again after going off the field, but you wonder, like, if he is fully fit, short turnaround, etc. They've had a couple of extra days, especially the Australian bowlers, um, heading into the test match. The test match starts on Thursday this week. Uh, but I do wonder that. Now, England have targeted Australia's third bowler throughout the entire series. That's been Boland. In this test match, it was Pat Cummins. Mm. Yeah. Uh, oh, so, so Hayeswood opened the bowling with uh, with Stark. Mm. Hayeswood takes five for 126. Right, okay. I don't know I so I wouldn't that. say it's his best five for of all time, but he does take five for. Um, I, 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 you know, previously having uh, Boland success in Australia and at the Oval, like he uh, Hayeswood's one that was – to go because Stark's record the last couple of years has been so good in red ball cricket and Pat Cummins, I think, is the captain. So those two have been sort of first picked. So then you sort of think about uh, Australia's change there. Yeah, I, I'm the same with you. If if if, uh, if Nisa plays, I'm like, yeah, I'll have a look at that for sure. Mm. Boland, great, uh, great contribution, especially in the second innings uh, where statistically in test cricket so far for him, he does the most damage. But they're going to be obsessed with winning Australia, aren't they? That, like, yeah. that's the thing Plum is saying. This, is, this isn't like, oh, let's give a couple of guys a, yeah. um, a, a run yeah. because the job is done. They, they know they fucked it up last time. Like, yeah. it's been great to retain the urn so that England are denied the thing they want. Yes, yes. That's really fun. But, do, I mean, remembering what happened last time at, at uh, Old Trafford, they won. They partied for 18,000 days, yeah. um, drunk as many drinks, mm. chompers, Tony, um, what's his name? Chalmers, is that his name? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Marcus Harris is behind, old, old Boogie Harris is behind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, And then the, 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 the country <laughs> yeah, turned on the Aussies for being drunk at, right. uh, at the Oval. That's so right. they're not going to make that mistake again. That's they're right. they're going to really, really want it. Yeah. Payne won the toss and bowled. Uh, yeah. They dropped like three catches, I think, in the first session. Yeah. There. I think Root might have made 100. Mm. Uh, I think Ollie Pope might have scored some runs, uh, maybe. Uh, and they lost the game pretty comprehensively in the end. But uh, I think they're fucking desperate. They're, mm. they're desperate because this will be the last Ashes series for a lot of these guys. Um, Was Ollie Pope playing in 2019? Uh, he might not so have been. Like I, might, little, I might have made that up. You're at your Denleys and out there. Okay. Yeah, he, well, Denley definitely played in the beginning of mm. that series. He might have been dropped by the end. Mm. I can't really remember. No, nah, I think. Mm. I think. Uh, no, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so, in terms of England, uh, they are interesting as well because Wokes went off the field a couple of times on that fourth day. They obviously, didn't get on day five. Uh, that's why Anderson bowled the first ball of day four and not Wokes because Wokes had gone off at the end of day three for 11 minutes, apparently. <laughs> Completely normal game, so he couldn't bowl the first ball. Apparently, he's got a bit of a niggle. Uh, so, interesting to see if he is fit. Broad has played now five test matches in a row for England because they played the Irish test matches. He played the Irish test match as well. Josh Tung, he um, he yeah, has been playing in county cricket. He, he should play. He, he, bowled, he bowled well at Edgebaston. Uh, Edgebaston, yeah. Um, and then you've got Mark Wood. Uh, again, short turnarounds, but an extra day's rest because he didn't play uh, the fifth day. So uh, he seems hard to drop. I mean, Wood and Wokes have been the, the, the two key elements for England coming back into the series, albeit falling short because of the weather in this test match. But um, I'm interested in Anderson, if Anderson plays. Uh, I... I think I started, we've done so many shows recently. I can't remember what I said. It might have said in the daily this morning, but uh, uh, I suspect Anderson's more likely to play in India, which is where England yeah. next play uh, a test series in India because Anderson, like, he just won't let you down. He's just relentless with line and length. Uh, line and length. Um, not a great record at the Oval. Either. Not a great record at the Oval. Yeah, I heard one person say that I haven't verified. Yes, that's but right. It works for the narrative. Um, and it's four wickets for the series. I think it is four wickets. Um, if Broad's fit. He's been the best bowler. He's been the best bowler of the series. Uh, Wood works if they're fit, undroppable. Mm. Uh, so that leaves one. Tong for Anderson. Is that what we're saying? Is that what we're saying? I wonder if Anderson has played his last home Test match. Mm, interesting. Interesting. I suppose uh, I'll just chat with him. And then, uh, and I guess the rest of the team stays the same. 
Yeah, I suppose, I suppose so. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know what to add to that. But it's not really it's not really about England. This story is about Australia. <laughs> well, this is, the, this is the one piece of cricket media that talks about Australia. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit Aussie-centric for me. <laughs> Should be noted, like in, in defence of England here as well, I've just looked up 2019 um, and it looks like a very England 2019 side. But, uh, you know, I was mentioning before that Australia lost Nathan Lyon. I mean, England lost. Jack Leach, you've been yes, serious, yes, you know, the spinner. Right. Uh, and I sp- was Joffre Archer ever available? He was, he was never going to play yeah, for yeah. me. Uh, I guess he was trying to come back to it as well. But, yeah, their, their, uh. their best their best side has never been available either. And then you go, to, well, how much of that about, is, is about luck and how much is about mm. um, preparation and that kind of thing is different for different players or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, they, they haven't been without their issues as well in terms of player availability. If, yep. you, you might even say, you know, Johnny Best, those leg injuries hurt them as well, uh, mm-hmm. in, you know, in terms of his ability to come back and all that kind of shit. It's just all part and parcel of the, you know, rich tapestry of randomness that happens in cricket and you just – and put it all into the melting pot and see what shit it comes up with. That includes the weather. Yeah, mm. Two one. Okay. Mm. All good. Has the game ever been washed out before? <laughs> Cricket and air. Don't think so. Uh, I can't remember it. <laughs> and that's the ashes. <laughs> Um, okay, well, uh, other test match cricket happening around the world. West Indies, India. They're playing in the second test match there. India batted first, made 438. Kohli got his 29th test uh, match, 100. Equal Bradman. So in the current group, Kane Williamson's got 28 test entries. Kohli's got 29. Smith, 32. And route thirty, I think that's right. I haven't got that in front of me. I'm just, I'm just top wow. mate. I've seen, I've wow. seen, I saw a graphic this morning um, that I put together. <laughs> <laughs> I, a showed, hobby. I showed it to my mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, look at this. It's now Virat's got twenty nine. Anyway, Colin made took one. It, took his time, equaling Bradman. He made one twenty one. Uh, Rohit made eighty. Uh, he scored 100 in the first test match, didn't he, Rohit? Yeah, Jadeja in 61. Jaiswal, he made 180 or some shit in the first test match on debut. He made 57. <laughs> and then Ashwood made 56. Made Jadeja and Ashwood. <laughs> That's just two of the best cricketers going around, just yeah. like, obviously, wickets. I mean, Ashwood made, got, he got 12 far, and he's got 56 in the first innings here. So they made 438. Uh, West Indies in the first innings, bowled out for 255. Craig Brathwaite hit 75. Mo Siraj took five for 60. Then India declared on 181 for two. Rohit hit again, made 57. Ishan Kishan was promoted to number three or four. He made 52 because he missed out in the first innings. Uh, so they've set West Indies 365 to win. The West Indies are currently 76 for two. Uh, that means 289 more to win. Um, I suppose the big ticket item there is Coley's yeah. 121. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's it's, it's a... You know, he's in a phase of his career where he's amassing numbers. And I also think he's in the – which is now sort of legacy shit. You know, like every single number, every ton he adds on or all these runs are like getting us – inching us closer to like wherever he ends up in all of these records Mm, uh, mm. at the end of his career because he's he's among the greatest to have ever played the game. And I think that the best thing you can say about Coley – we're playing against the West Indies here. It's difficult to um, rate it as in, you know – to know where to rate it is what I mean. Mm. Uh, it's an away from home hundred. They're always hard, irrespective. Yep. Yep. Uh, but given the state of the West Indies, it, it, there's, it, I'm not saying it's asterisk. It's just uh, it's you just can't rate it as highly. But yep. it's but um, he's in the phase of his career where guys probably start to drop off, you know. And mm. like I think it's a testament to his fitness uh, and his application that like he's he's come through a really difficult period and he's just come back to churning out runs. You can't make test runs even against you know like. Uh, Teams on the decline, unless you're hungry, and he did. The guy mm. just stays so hungry, so fit, and uh, it, it's it's true um, greatness and athleticism, you know, that uh, p- permits him to do stuff like that. Mm. Very easy for him to put the cue in the rack or other players at the same phase of their careers mm. and just drop off a little bit. But you just don't. You just get the impression that's not what he's about. Uh, so, you know, um, I'm. I mean, I, I feel there's a certain safety for me seeing hundreds next to Virat's name because that's kind of that's just what the guy lives for so I'm, yep. I'm happy for him obviously we know uh, his that's important his drive for test cricket um, especially but given that India come out to Australia for a five test match series first time that's not ever happened no is it five test match series yeah, first they're time normally ever? four they're yeah. normally four but yeah. maybe like back in the day might have done five no that doesn't yeah. seem right anyway uh, it's a five test match series when they come out in Australia 
in a summer's time for 2024, 2025. Uh, and selfishly, like, just kind of want to see Coley play. So I'm like, I'm happy to see him score runs mm. so he, like, stays in the mix for, mm. you know, test match selection because by the time that comes in, uh, is Rohit Sharma the captain? And, and yeah. Really like, and, like, yeah. like I'd, I'd be up for um, just, I'd say this in a really casual, un, like, ill-considered way, but um, I'd be really up for, like, Coley knowing knowing that he's going to stay lithe and lean mm. and fit and hungry. Maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, tumult in the Indian uh, cricketing kind of uh, sort of ecosystem and he has to step in to be captain for like you know one last crack at Australia oh, again yeah. and he comes doubly aggressive than he has last mm. time just for the feels of it yeah. you know what I mean just for the vibe of it I, 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 like I, I'd I'd go hard for another like Coley aggressive uh, series out here do you remember the do you remember the bushfire appeal game where like uh, uh, like Hayden and Langer walked out to bat for Australia again, mm. and in that like, yeah. the chariot, yeah. and I was like, "Oh Instead fuck sh- yeah, yeah. fuck yeah, I'm, exactly. back. I'm back, oh, it's back, yeah. it's back." I'm I'm from mm. fourteen again, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's a prime of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Peaked in high school kind of guy. But you uh, know, when India come out here though, like they 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 they're awesome. You know, like they know they just they have been dead, yeah, yeah. hard at Australia, yeah, yeah. and they know how to well, beat Australia at its own game. And I, mean, I just love how Coley leads that. Uh, Coley's record in Australia is incredible. Yeah, he loves it. He gets up for it. Yeah. it's good shit. It's good yeah. cricket. Speaking of. Indian cricketers and just high level, top level cricket uh, all around. I want to talk about Harman Preet Kaur. Uh, so, Harman, so India, the Indian women are playing in a, a T20 and ODI series. India won the T20 series two to one, two one, yeah, two one, uh, and they are playing. Uh, they were playing in the third of three ODIs in Bangladesh. Bangladesh won the first ODI on Duckworth Lewis system. And India won the second one pretty easily. So the third one's the decider. Now, it finishes in a tie. Um, and so uh, each team uh, share the spoils. Uh, we'll get onto that later, share, share a trophy. So Harman Precourt is batting in the run chase uh, to chase. I think it's like 265 or something like that uh, in Bangladesh. Harman Precourt goes for a sweep shot off a spinner, uh, hits the pad, is caught at slip, and is given out, um, caught at slip. So uh, as she is given out, she cannot believe that this has happened. Um, We've all been there. We've all been there. That, that, that stage of a dismissal. Yeah, I, I recognise that part. Yep. She stands at the crease. Bangladesh players uh, come together, celebrate. Stands, stands next to the stumps, incredulous. Then turns around. Been and, there, been and, there. And then with her left hand, smashes the stumps over. How many? <laughs> Only one of them, I think. Was it? Oh, I was, oh, two, it was, was all two. three. She took them out, didn't she? No, I, uh, I think it was two. It was it was impressive. Oh, like like a like a keeper like just taking one bail. <laughs> it was like that's what the meatloaf song was about. Two out of three ain't bad. Um, <laughs> so about, anyway, about so arm she's. And <laughs> <laughs> well, that's real song's ruined. <laughs> anyway, so she smashes the stumps over, then begins to walk off the field towards the dressing room, is blowing up at the umpire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, like, as she's walking off the field, giving a thumbs up to the crowd as well, who's, uh, who I presume, are, like, giving it to her, I'm not sure. Um, and so then in the press conference on the field, uh, like in the, in the post-match ceremony on the field where she's being interviewed uh, for TV, she says this quote. This would be good. I think a lot of learning from us, uh, for us, from the game, even apart from the cricket, the kind of umpiring that was happening, we were very surprised. The next time when we come to Bangladesh, we will make sure we have to deal with this type of umpiring and prepare ourselves accordingly. They, Bangladesh, batted really well, batted according to the situation. They were taking those singles, which were very crucial. In between, we leaked a few runs, but when we were batting, we controlled the game very well. But as I mentioned earlier, some pathetic umpiring was done, and we are really disappointed about some decisions given by the umpires. Now, ESPN Crick Info understands that when the end of series photograph with both sets of players were being taken, this is when like both teams are in front of like a big banner and they're holding the trophy, India one side, Bangladesh the other. Harman Preet shouted, bring the umpires too, suggesting they were a part of the Bangladesh team. Uh, Nagar, who is the uh, Bangladesh captain, it is understood, spoke about it to BCB officials and took her players back to the dressing room soon after. So she was fucking pissed off. So she said in the press conference about the incident later, it is totally her problem. I have nothing to do with it. As a player, she could have shown better manners. I can't tell you what happened, but it didn't feel right to be there for the photograph with my team. It wasn't the right environment. That's why we went back. Cricket is a game of discipline and respect. 
Uh, then about the umpiring, Nagar, ba- uh, Bangladesh captain, said, the umpires wouldn't give her out if she wasn't out. We had umpires from men's international cricket, so they were good umpires. What are they, India, going to say about the court or run-out dismissals, of which there were six, excluding the Harmanpreet and uh, uh, Magna Wickets? We have respected their decisions. The umpire's decision is the final decision, whether I like it or not. We didn't. Uh, why didn't we behave in that way, uh, like the Indian players? So you would think so. Uh, coupling these uh, incidents together, uh, showing no respect to Bangladesh uh, publicly, uh, saying in the uh, on-field presentation that there was pathetic umpiring, and also when you're being dismissed, turning around and smashing the stumps over. You're thinking, well, you're looking at a fairly decent suspension there. Well, she lost seventy-five percent of a match fee. That, that, that's it. 75% of the match fee. What what does one have to do <laughs> to be suspended or lose all of the match fee? I mean, Peza, I think in my life, like I think the word disgrace is overused. It's an overused term. That is genuinely a disgrace. And I was just thinking about like, okay, I'm thinking like Harman Pre Core. Like, just think like how old is Harman Pre Core? She's 34. 34, captain of your national side, that is genuinely embarrassing to be behaving that way in one in one respect. It is a disgrace. It is a genuine disgrace that the punishment for that, for those actions, which are embarrassing, 75% of your match fee, the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Thoughts? Oh, look, I think they just had, need to have a look at the umpires. Um, <laughs> it's the umpires' fault. <laughs> the umpires yeah. were match-fixing and they're cheating. They're on the take. I mean, that's, that's well, what you're I don't think anybody saying. said that, but I did well, read a lot, a, lot, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the public commentary afterwards from um, those on, uh, you know, in Harmon Preet's team, essentially, preferring to speak more about the quality of the umpires. Right, um, right. And I just think that that kind of thing. Look, you know, Smashing the stumps like that is something that you wouldn't uh, accept from your own child doing it. You know, like it, it is the it's the behaviour of it's it's juvenile, it's juvenile tantrum, yeah. Yeah. Um, childish behaviour. It is classic sporting red mist. Saw, She's got form. We saw the same thing exactly in the World Cup when you might recall in a really important run chase in the semi final, which obviously mm. Australia then ended up going on to win and then beating. South Africa in the mm. final in South Africa Harman Preet Kaur was going for a two to the outfield and as she was sliding her bat home from a, a throw from maybe Jess Donaldson in the outfield her bat like dug in just before the crease mm. uh, she dropped her bat and as she was like mid-air crossing the line Healy took the stumps then she walked off the field and then threw her bat and then uh, and then bashed her bat several times when she was walking up the stairs to the dressing room there's form there I just you know like um I mean, it needs to be now said just as the kind of uh, like, you know, to close the gates on it, it's like Pretty funny. Australian cricketers have behaved badly. Sandpaper. And that was bad and deserving of criticism <laughs> at the time. And I think we have. <laughs> and it sucks when people behave badly. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, like it, it, it's uh, – it's, it's, what, what's curious about it is, yeah, a lot of the comments – <laughs> afterwards yeah. were fixated more on, yeah, the quality of the umpiring and you just um, wonder about the freedom some players feel they have yeah, uh, to yeah. be a, above um, punishment yeah. you know, for for that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, it, you know, I, my, it's, I tell you what, though, like what I suppose what annoys me the most about it as – a former cricketer or someone who played the game is that like I think if you've done it in the backyard or at training, which even which is still very grim, yeah, we all know that there's probably fewer more cathartic feelings than get than <laughs> actually getting your bat and flat either flat batting or using the edge to mm. take out all three stumps mm. from the middle, you know, like you're slicing open the cork of a champagne bottle with a yeah. samurai sword. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. it's one of the greatest ever feelings, the clatter of the stumps. Mm. And so it's not fair if someone's able – And but you're taught not to do it. It's not fair if someone's able to do it and they don't get punished. Yeah. Because now, now, I mean, we're looking at an epidemic, aren't we, across the Maidans uh, of India <laughs> and whatever, <laughs> of just <laughs> stumps going everywhere uh, and, and yeah. here, you know, and in Australia and around the world. So, yeah, uh, yeah it, I don't know. You know, it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty, it was pretty grim. 
but at the same time, kind of funny. Well, it's kind of like, I suppose this is a point, like, this is a point you're trying to make, right? This isn't a news story if Harman Preet call, like, you know, has the book thrown at her, right? Like, if it, if it does, it's mm. like, what, did you see Harman Preet do that thing? Yeah. yeah, she got nailed for that. Yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah. you can't do that. It's like, carry on, but it's more like 75% um, match fee, yeah. 50% for the act, 25 for the umpire stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then most people saying, like, well, the umpires do need to be looked at. Yeah. And that's it. And it's like, yeah. what? Oh, <laughs> all right, we're gonna, gonna have to talk about it now. You know what I mean? Do you remember, do you remember, um, Shakib Al Hassan did it yeah. once in like a Bangladesh yeah, yeah, T20 yeah. league. He like came over to the umpires and kicked yeah, the stumps yeah, over. Yeah. <laughs> like kicking them over—that's yeah. even better. Exactly. Like using your own limbs. Yeah. I like that. But he—he he was. I think he. I think he was punished. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, something we didn't talk about last week was uh, the Sri Lanka Pakistan uh, Test series, which is going on at the moment. They're in between Test matches one and two. Uh, we didn't talk about because we haven't seen a single ball. But now we've watched every single ball. So the first test was in Gaul. Uh, Sri Lanka batted first there and made 312. Uh, Diane Jana De Silva made 122 in the first innings for Sri Lanka. Wicket shared evenly between Afridi Shah and Abra Ahmed all took three. Uh, in Pakistan's innings, they hit 461 in returns. That's a lead of 100, and, let's call it 140, uh, 150 indeed. Uh, they were in a little bit of trouble at four for 73. Then Sword Shaquille hit 208 red of 361, including 19 boundaries. Uh, and they made 461 to have a lead. Of, what did I say? Their lead of 150 or something. Uh, Sri Lanka then made 279. Uh, Diane, John, Diane Jana De Silva again hit 82. Good match for him. Uh, so, uh, so then the run chase was then 133, which Pakistan then chased Six down, thanks to Imam or Huck opening the batting there for Pakistan, what hitting 50. Uh, so a good game all around. Um, uh, Jai Surya, do you remember who took, uh, I think he took 12 for against us? Mm-hmm. Uh, on debut, on debut. On, yeah. on debut, yeah. He took, four, he took four for, that's it, Prabhat, okay. yeah. Uh, so there you go. Uh, look, Pez, I'm going to give it to you straight up. That looks like a great test match. <laughs> Haven't seen a single ball. But I felt, but I felt guilty. Could, could but need I, another bite. I could, <laughs> but, but I felt guilty because you know, spent a lot of time talking about the cricket. But hey, there's only so much you can watch. Yeah, How I did mean, you enjoy the I, game, yeah, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, How brought, the match I actually brought half an hour's analysis <laughs> to it. <laughs> it's not fair, is it? It's not fair. Uh, okay, well, um, we should talk. We should we should talk. We're gonna get we into should that. talk. We should, yeah. we should, we're gonna get into hashtag Ask TGC. Uh, but of course, Pez, this episode is brought to you by Budgie Smuggler. You guys already know you can use the code Good Areas for free shipping at budgiesmuggler.com.au. Mate, what about some of the fucking temperatures? What about some of the temperatures uh, in the northern hemisphere at the moment? I, yeah. as I said, I said, silver lining. It's budgie. It's budgie weather. It is budgie weather. It's exactly my point. Uh, now, uh, at the end of the ashes, I'm heading off to Japan. Yeah, uh, for a couple sick. of weeks. Never been to Japan. Yeah, very excited by it. Uh, everyone that says, everyone that's been says it's like their favorite country. Yeah. Like, like to a man. I've never been, and I like have had the same experience with others. I'm desperate. Yes. I'm desperate, mate. Yeah, so, <laughs> just like your clubs, your former club song. We're a bunch of total desperates. <laughs> There's a lot of other lines in, in that there song. Is a, there is a lot uh, of I other lobbied lines. to have it changed. I don't think it's fit for purpose in the 21st century. <laughs> especially with, but, especially but, with the women's division. Oh, I have dabbled uh, with a, like a Patreon episode of an actual, of getting like a, um, a like a literary um, like expert in to mm. actually go through the, the club song mm. bre- to break it down. Mm. Uh, One of our very – really about the first year, maybe two of the uh, of the podcast in like 2015, 16, something like that, we had uh, Jeff Lemon, obviously, yes, from yeah, The Final yeah, Word yeah. and, and other um, bits of work that he does <laughs> yeah. uh, on the show to break down club songs, I recall. Yeah. Uh, he Roger. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's been on BBC TMS. He writes for The Guardian. Yeah. On yeah, Final Word. Yeah. yeah. Jeff does more than The Final I'm just saying, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's where a lot of people know him from. Anyway, yeah. Um, so it wasn't point. Oh yeah, going to Japan. Yeah. So um and I just always associate Japan with like uh cherry blossom season, obviously. Mm. Uh and like more like Mount Fuji sort of snow gear, you know? <laughs> I'm not talking about Carl Rackerman. I'm just talking about like just cooler climates. But anyway <laughs> I associate it with <laughs> cherry blossoms and doing bags on Mount Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Um, Carl Rackerman <laughs> playing for the local side. I've got Carl Rackerman. I've got Nostradamus. 
All my mates are there. No, um, but I just associated Japan with cooler climates. I didn't realise it gets – but it's, apparently it's fucking scorching there, like 38 degrees. Right. Non-stop at the moment. Anyway, okay. so maybe uh, maybe some budgie weather myself. Uh, oh, I see. That's yes, nice. Bu- get a couple of bucket hats. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. A couple of cooker hats. Yeah. yeah. Anti-vac stuff. Now, I can use the code Good Airs for free shipping uh, at budgiesmuggler.com. Very nice. Uh, ShaneWatson.au. It's Winning the Inner Battle, uh, where you can buy uh, his book, Winning the Inner Battle. You can buy it uh, in paperback, audiobook, or ebook. You can buy it from anywhere in the world at ShaneWatson.au. Get rid of the com. It's ShaneWatson.au. AU. Now it's been suggested to us that we should do something the opposite. We should we should, we should be talking about um, how to. I'm not necessarily lose the inner battle. There'll be uh, there'll be uh, some, some copyright claims there uh, from, <laughs> from, from, from from Watto, but maybe like a you know like an anti masterclass. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, right. Just that's a rival right. Watto. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or or as a companion piece. Mm. You know what I mean? I, used to, I remember going to a professional development thing, like uh, I reckon a decade ago, mm. where one of the uh, they, were, they were teaching us kind of like management uh, techniques to get the most out of your team in a team meeting mm-hmm. and a fun way of figuring out the best practice delivery of any task or kind of um, like anything you were trying to organise is to look at what needed to be done and then literally say the opposite thing you would do if you wanted to make it as bad as possible. Okay. So, um an example of like oh let's let's deliver this um let's deliver this report on time and execute it perfectly and successfully it's like yeah. okay i'm gonna turn up five hours late and i'm gonna turn up naked with my friend carl Rackerman. with my friend carl Rackerman with 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 drugs and a gun in my <laughs> in my holster like i went really you know, really far with it. it's like now i've said that now what's the opposite of that the opposite is turning up on time looking dressed and prepared, you know <laughs> I'm naked. I have I have all manner of um <laughs> of all manner of illegal weaponry on me. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have a dwarf with me on a chain. <laughs> no. And it was it was it was a really fun and creative way to do that meaning. You're like, okay, that's one thing. What's the opposite of that? You know, and then you write it down. Okay, that that's our behaviour. That's our standard for that. You know, when I write, I'm going to do it with my other hand. I'm going to do it with a pen. Yep. You know, and I'm going to do it in another language that I don't know. And I'm actually going to write some um, Ill- Ill- like libelous things about my coworker. And instead know, of ink, it's urine. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm saying this could be. <laughs> instead of paper, it's a wall. <laughs> I'm going to deliver the piece. Urine. It's going to be urine soaked paper. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> That's going to be our companion piece to winning the inner battle. It's going to be losing the, losing the inner battle by the grade cricketer. Not a bad chat. And that could be a companion piece. What I might sell that as a companion piece. That might work well. And we'll get him to read for the audiobook. Yeah. I saw what I was actually is it is play, he played in Pinehurst, uh, famous US golf oh, course nice. at the moment. Uh, uh, he said it was a highlight of his golfing life, which oh, I, which nice. I'd imagine would be story yeah, pretty, pretty good golfing yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, ShaneWatson.au is where you can buy winning the inner battle. Uh, Saddle walk- Orcas are going well in the MLC. Yeah, yep. Six points from four games, three wins, one loss. Okay, a net run rate of plus zero point eight oh six. Is that good? Well, it's top of the table. What's your favourite net run rate? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Hash, <laughs> and to which decimal place, Alec? Like, how far do you like to go with it? What's your favourite net run rate? <laughs> uh, hashtag us, TGC. Do you want to do it, Pez? Yes, I do. One second while I get it in front of me. Here we go. Uh, it says in large font... Anonymous for legal reasons. <laughs> Always a good <laughs> Always stuff. Good. <laughs> Always good stuff. <clears throat> I recently moved back to Australia after six years in Leeds. While there, I played the odd village cricket match, averaging 14 with the stick and zero with the ball. Brackets never took a wicket close brackets. The reason I returned to the lucky country was because of the breakdown of my marriage with my now ex-wife, who you might gather is English. As I sat down to watch the start of day three at Headingley, reminiscing about one pound seventy pints of Carlsbergs at Shooters, Yorkshire puddings, cold and bitter winters, and just the general feeling of despair and helplessness living in the north of England, the WhatsApp started going off. Mate, what's the weather in Leeds looking like? A fellow Aussie cricket tragic in the group chat asked me. Got any contacts in Leeds? 
<laughs> hmm, I think I might know one, I thought to myself. So I searched my contacts for Ice Queen and sent a text asking, how's the weather in Leeds today? To my surprise, I got an answer almost immediately. We'd chatted divorce applications and selling the house, but nothing as trivial as the current levels of rainfall in and around Leeds. I'd prepared myself, as I had for the previous 12 months, for a week-long wait for a reply. Hi, um, it's warm but raining a lot. Why do you ask? Despite the disappointing news regarding the state of the day's play, what happened next was truly remarkable. We had a good long chat reminiscing about our past life and our plans for the future, sharing the odd joke, and she even commented on how good I look in my new WhatsApp display pic, which is a selfie of me in an elevator looking as swole as Daddy Stoyness. Just, just before tea time, the issue of settlement was broached. <laughs> <laughs> A touchy subject for the past few months. Let's just get it over with, she said. I'll agree to your last offer. And there you have it. Months of pain and animosity washed away by the rain in Leeds. It had been the catalyst for so much frustration for me over the years, denying me much-needed vitamin D and days of cricket. But now, now it had resulted in the end of a battle that felt longer than the ashes themselves. I think we can all learn a lesson from this. Cricket brings people together. People that don't know each other, people that do. Even people that never wanted to speak to each other ever again. Day three at Leeds might have been my fi- favourite day of Ashes cricket ever, and I hope it's yours too after reading this. The lesson could also be she only wants to settle because she met and fell in love with Ben Stokes after day one while I was wanking to slow motion replays of Mitch Marsh <laughs> pull shots at 4am, so I should probably get out more. Interested to note to get your thoughts. Fuck Fuck off 5 nil. brackets weather dependent, <laughs> regards anonymous. P.S. Change to fuck off 4-1 if we lose this test. Cheers, boys. <laughs> I suppose if so it's change it to fuck off 3-1 now, uh, uh, yeah, and yeah, that maybe. might just uh, settle uh, the score generally. Uh, look, Anon, appreciate that. It's beautiful that you've uh, that you've managed to come together and finally move on with this stage of your life. Um, yeah, look, like Ash has managed to sell, settle a divorce. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Now, look, uh, you know, for me, uh, the day three at Leeds won't r- rank in my top 1,000 days of Ashes mm. cricket memories, uh, and I'll probably forget about this question ever existing in about mm. um, no, 16 mm. minutes' time. Yeah, like everyone in England who came up to us, I remember that question I asked? Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. yeah. I asked yeah. the question about um, uh, about uh, who's the alpha. Yeah, that's right. I asked, oh, that, one, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I asked yeah. that one about the cock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Me fans are stupid <laughs> pigs. Were you the one who put pound coins in your uncertain sized <laughs> penis? I remember some and, of them. And called yourself the fruit machine? Because <laughs> I remember that one. Hey, this guy's paying out. <laughs> but isn't that isn't that nice? Isn't that nice in this in this world of tumult and animosity and mm. when, when you know it's been it's been such high tensions ever since the Bear Stow run out. I think that's what really triggered it, and and the booing and hissing, and then the and the back and forth, and then we're all refreshing for Piers Morgan's Twitter account to see if a, if a new tweet has come mm. out, if, if, a, if a new serotonin hit mm. or a release of energy has been put out into the Twitterverse, which is about to change its logo apparently to a big X. Mm. You know, uh, in this world, we all just want love, and and to all come together and unite for our distaste in India taking over cricket. <laughs> I genuinely thought uh, I genuinely thought that when th- his friends asked got any contacts in Leeds and he looked up Ice Queen yeah. that he was looking for cocaine. That's what I thought as well, originally. Yeah. Yeah. But he's changed his ex wife's name in the phone to Ice Queen. To Ice Queen. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway. Could have gone, she, gone another could have gone another direction. She, she happens to be an ice dealer. But yeah. that's that's a separate thing. Little queen. <laughs> She's actually Camilla Park Bowles. <laughs> Better than calling a dealer John Bags, <laughs> which I've heard others do. <laughs> well, that'll just about do for uh, Test Match 4. Sleep is around the corner for all involved. Oh, well. It's sweet relief. It's sweet relief for the Australian contingent. Um, I know some people really wanted the grand finale. Me, no interest in that at all. Uh, absolute anxiety. I can now release the tension that was in my prostate for months. Mm. <laughs> Attention. <laughs> Feel it down in my plums. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know what? The last test match starts in four days' time. Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>